Greetings to all. Today I am going to deliver a talk on monetary theories of trade cycle. In my presentation, I will focus on two major monetary theories of trade cycle. My first point concerns with the Hayek's theory of trade cycle. Next, I will focus on Cartwright's monetary theory of trade cycle. First of all, I would like to give you the general information about monetary theories of trade cycle. The tra traditional trade cycle theories take into consideration the monetary and credit system of an economy to analyze trade cycles. Therefore, theories developed by these traditional theories are called monetary theory of trade cycle. The monetary theory states that the trade cycle is the result of changes in monetary and credit market conditions. Hartray, the main supporter of this theory, advocated that trade cycles are the continuous phases of inflation and deflation. According to him, changes in an economy takes place due to changes in the flow of money. Now, I would like to highlight the over-investment theory or Hayek's theory. Professor Von Hayek, in his book on monetary theory and trade cycle and prices and production, has developed a theory of trade cycle. He has distinguished between equilibrium or natural rate of interest and market rate of interest. Market rate of interest is one at which demand for and supply of money are equal. Equilibrium rate of interest is one at which savings are equal to investment. If both equilibrium rate of interest and market rate of interest are equal, there will be stability in the economy. If equilibrium rate of interest is higher than market rate of interest, there will be prosperity and vice versa. For example, if market rate of interest is lower than equilibrium rate of interest due to increase in money supply, investment will go up. The demand for capital goods will increase leading to rise in price of these goods. As a result, there will be a diversion of resources from consumption goods industries to capital goods industries. Employment and income of the factors of production in capital goods industries will increase. This will increase the demand for consumption goods. There will be competition for factors of production between capital goods and consumption good industries. Factor prices go up. Cost of production increases. At this time, banks will decide to reduce credit expansion. This will lead to rise in market rate of interest above the equilibrium rate of interest. Investment will fall. Production declines. leads to depression. Finally, I would like to address the criticisms of Hayek's theory of trade cycle. It is not easy to transfer resources from capital goods industries to consumer goods industries and vice versa. This theory does not explain all the phases of trade cycle. It gives too much importance to rate of interest in determining investment. It has neglected other factors determining investment. Hayek has suggested that the volume of Money supply should be kept natural, neutral to solve the problem of cyclical fluctuations. But this concept of neutrality of money is based on old quantity theory of money, which has lost its validity. Now, we will shift on to the Hartray's monetary theory of trade cycle. Professor Hartray considers trade cycle to be a purely monetary phenomenon. According to him, Non-monetary factors like wars, strikes, floods, droughts may cause only temporary depression. Hartray believes that expansion and contraction of money are the basic causes of trade cycle. Money supply changes due to changes in rate of interest. When rate of interest is reduced by banks, entrepreneurs will borrow more and investment. This causes an increase in money supply and rise in price leads to expansion. On the other hand, an increase in the rate of interest will lead to reduction in borrowing, investment, prices, and business activity, and hence depression. Hartree believes that trade cycle is nothing but small-scale replica of inflation and deflation. An increase in money supply will lead to boom and vice versa. 
a decrease in money supply will result in depression banks will give more loans to traders and merchants by lowering the rate of interest merchants place more orders which induce the entrepreneurs to increase production by employing more laborers this results in increase in employment and income leading to an increase in demand for goods thus the phase of expansion starts business expands factors of production are fully employed price increases further resulting in boom conditions at this time the banks call off loans from the borrowers in order to repay the loans the borrowers sell their stocks this sudden disposal of goods leads to fall in prices and liquidation of marginal firms banks will further contract credit thus the period of contraction starts making the producers reduce their output the process of contraction becomes cumulative leading to depression when the economy is at the level of depression banks have excess reserves therefore banks will lead at a low rate of interest which makes the entrepreneurs to borrow more thus revival starts becomes cumulative and leads to boom let me elaborate further on the criticisms of hartree's theory hartree's theory is considered to be an incomplete theory as it does not take into account the non monetary factors which cause trade cycles it is wrong to say that banks alone cause business cycle credit expansion and contraction do not lead to boom and depression but they are accentuated by bank credit the theory exaggerates the importance of bank credit as a means of financing development in recent years all firms resort to plow back of profits for expansion mere contractor of bank credit will not lead to depression if marginal efficiency of capital is high businessmen will undertake investment in spite of high rate of interest if they feel that the future prospects are bright rate of interest does not determine the level of borrowing and investment a high rate of interest will not prevent the people to borrow therefore it may be stated that banking system cannot originate a trade cycle expansion in contraction of credit may be a supplementary cause but not the main and sole cause of trade cycle i hope you understand the topic related to monetary theories of trade cycle such as hayek's over investment theory of trade cycle and hartree's monetary theory of trade cycle